There's nothing worse than going to a barbecue and having to eat a dried out burnt burger, or even worse, one that's still raw. Stick with me and I'm gonna help make sure that never happens to your family and guests. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my seven simple steps to grill the perfect burger every single time. Hello and welcome to Grilling and Chilling with Coleman. And unless the real Coleman is still trying to figure out what's inside a vegan burger, I'm Coleman. My passion is helping grilling and barbecue enthusiasts become the backyard grill master they've always wanted to be. Labor Day is coming up and as always, we've got a lot of friends coming over. And as always, I'm gonna be on the grill. Now there's nothing more embarrassing than serving up a lousy burger at one of the cookouts. So let's make sure that never happens to you. Now burgers are pretty simple to grill as long as you follow a few easy steps. So let's get started. Step one is choosing the right meat. An 80-20 ground chuck has always been my best choice. 80-20 means it's 80% meat and 20% beef fat. And don't try to use any with less fat content like a 90-10. Otherwise, you're really gonna wind up with a dried out burger. Now I picked this up at my local grocery store and there's really nothing special about it. As a tip, when you're working with your meat, make sure that it's cold. The burgers are gonna stay together a lot better that way, because as that fat starts to warm up, things are gonna start to fall apart. Also, we're not making a meatloaf here. So adding a lot of extras into the meat like eggs and bread and our other seasonings is really not necessary. What is important is that we make our patties into equal sizes, and I prefer mine about one third of a pound. As you pick up the meat, form it into a loose ball. Making sure not to work the meat too much, you don't really want it to become one large mass. Then weigh them out to make sure they're all about the same size. Once you get them all uniform size, start forming them into the patty size that you want. Ideally, you want it to be a little bigger than your buns. They're gonna shrink down to the perfect size when you grill them. Here's another little secret. If I was to grill these burgers just like this, they would actually plump up like a baseball just like this. To keep this from happening and to make sure they grill up nice and flat, take your thumb and press a little dimple in the center of each patty. Now it doesn't need to be too big, just a little bigger than a quarter right in the center. Now for step two. The next step is, is we need to get some seasoning on these patties and all I'm gonna use on mine is some kosher salt and some cracked black pepper and this is how I'm gonna do it. Start off by placing a piece of wax paper on the bottom of a baking sheet. Then sprinkle on a layer of kosher salt. Don't worry about using too much as most of it will fall off when you get it on the grill. Then a layer of fresh cracked black pepper. And place your patties on top of the seasoning with the dimple you made facing up. Press that patty down a little bit to help it cling to that salt and pepper and then season the top and that's really all they need. Now if you're grilling for a big group, you can actually prep these the night before and leave them in the refrigerator overnight. Now let's go ahead and get them in the fridge to stay cool while we get the grill ready. If you're a regular viewer, you know that I don't use my gas grill very much, but I love to use it when I'm grilling burgers, and especially when I'm grilling burgers for a large group. The key to grilling these burgers is gonna to be to grill them on high. The other key is gonna to be to have a cool zone. To get that on my grill, I'm gonna have the three burners on this end on high, and I'm gonna leave the two burners on this end off. If you're grilling those burgers on a charcoal grill like my Weber kettle, you're gonna wanna bank all those hot coals on one side and leave the other side as your cool side. You might also notice that I took off the top rack on my grill. Now, if you have a smaller gas grill, this also might help when it comes time to flip those burgers later. So let's go ahead and close up the grill and let it heat up for about 15 minutes. But why we wait, we just got in a batch of our grilling and chilling stickers and I'd love for you all to have one. Just go on over to our website. The link is in the description below. Click on the contact us tab, send me your address and I'll ship one out to you free of charge and I'll even pay for the shipping. Now it's time for step four. It's important to have a nice bun for your burger and I prefer a nice Kaiser roll. I picked these up at the local Walmart, but I'm gonna spruce them up just a little bit. We're gonna toast them a little later, but to get them ready for that, I'm gonna add a little softened butter to the inside. Now that's gonna add a nice flavor and a good color when they're toasted. The second thing I'm gonna do is add some sesame seeds to the top, but not in the typical way that you've seen with some melted butter. I took a few egg whites here in the bowl, and I'm gonna paint a little on top of each bun. Then sprinkle on some sesame seeds. That egg white is gonna glue these seeds to the top, but as a bonus, when we toast these buns later on the grill, it's also gonna give it a nice shine. Our grill should be nice and hot now, so let's go ahead and get those patties out of the fridge and get them on the grill. Time for step five. 
The grill's nice and hot now and it's ready for the burgers. But before we put them on, if you're enjoying this video and you're getting some value out of it, hit that red subscribe button below and click on the thumbs up. It really helps more people find my videos. Before I put them on, I like to make sure I add some oil to the grates to make sure nothing sticks. Then place the burgers on the hot side of the grill and let them start to cook. Making sure that dimple we made is facing up. Here's a few important tips when grilling these burgers. Tip number one, we're only gonna be flipping these burgers once after about three or four minutes. Repeatedly flipping them really doesn't help them cook any better or faster. Plus, we really take the risk of breaking them or dropping them, and not that I've ever done that before. Tip number two, never, never, never smash your burgers on the grill. These are not smash burgers. Smash burgers are grilled on a flat top griddle, not on a grill grate. Smashing them just drives out the juice and causes huge flare ups, making the burgers dry and tough. So resist the urge, leave them alone, grab your favorite beverage and relax for a few minutes. After three or four minutes and you start to see the meat juices bubbling to the top of the patty, it's time to flip them. When you flip them, put them on a clean, hot part of the grill. This will ensure that they get great grill marks on both sides. And remember, don't press them down. At this point, the burgers really only have a few more minutes to grill and we need to get these buns on the toast. Place the buns on the grill, buttered side down over direct heat. They only need to be on for about a minute, so keep a close eye on them. Once you're happy with them, get them off the heat. One of my pet peeves is having a hot burger and a cold, unmelted piece of cheese on top. Now these burgers only have about one minute left, so it's the perfect time to add the cheese. A slice of cheese right on top of each burger is perfect. The cheese I chose today is smoked cheddar. I love the flavor it adds to the burger. Then close the lid for the last minute. Okay, it's been a minute, so let's go ahead and get them off the grill. Now, if you wanna test them with an instant read thermometer, they should be right at about 150 degrees when they're done. Now I can see that they're done, so we don't really don't need to test them, but let's go ahead and get them off the heat. One mistake I see people do quite often is they'll take the meat right off the grill and put it onto the bottom bun, and I really try to avoid doing that. The meat juices from the patty will soak into that bottom bun and really make it soggy. Plus, we wanna let these rest for about a minute before we start to build our burgers. And while they rest, let's go ahead and review what we did. For step one, we made our patties and included a little dimple on top. On step two, we seasoned our meat and put them in the fridge to stay cold. Step three, we lit our grill and set up our two zone grilling. For step four, we got our buns ready to toast and bedazzled them with some sesame seeds. The patties went on the grill for step five and we flipped them after three or four minutes. Step six, we toasted those buns and added some cheese to the top of our burgers. And finally, for step seven, we pulled them off to rest for one minute. When I have a large group here in the GNC kitchen, I really just like to lay out all the fixings and let everybody make their own burger. But this is my dinner today, so let's go ahead and build this thing. Start with the bottom bun, and for dressing, I'm a little weird. I love Thousand Island dressing, so let's add a little to the bottom. Then, to keep that patty from making that bun soggy, a leaf of lettuce. Now I'm using iceberg today, but most of the time I prefer spinach. Then that gorgeous beef patty we grilled top with that smoked cheddar. And my regular viewers know that I love pickles. So next in line is a few kosher deal stacker pickles. I really like these stacker slice pickles because I get a pickle in every bite. Next in line is one of my favorite things to add to a burger, New Mexico green chili. I buy this stuff fresh every year and roast it here on the grill. That way I have it all year long. Now for those of you who like onions and tomatoes, you can add those now, but I don't care for either one, so no thanks. Now take a look at this top bun. That egg wash really gave it a nice shine and those sesame seeds really added a nice touch. So let's go ahead and add a little Thousand Island dressing to the top. and then place it right on top. Man, now that's a burger. This is definitely something you'd be proud to serve your guests. Let's cut into this thing and get a good look at her.
I recently asked my viewers in one of my videos if they actually wanted to see me eat on camera, and I was surprised to hear that they actually did. Well, actually, I think what they said was is they wanted to see if my food was edible. So here goes, let's take a bite of this burger. Man, that burger is still so juicy. Man, it's leaking out on the cutting board. Let's take a bite. Mmm. Mmm. Man. That perfect, that burger is just perfect. Man, and I just love the kick that that green chili adds to that burger. Mmm. And those pickles, love the pickles. And I can really taste the smoke flavor in that cheese. I gotta take another bite. Mm. Mm. And that burger is still so juicy. Mm. You wanna be the star of the show at your next cookout? You follow these eight simple steps that I showed you and your burgers will definitely turn out amazing. Now, y'all go grill something. subscribe turn on that notification bell drop a comment below and come grilling and chilling with Coleman